Hello guys, Dino here from Redcraft Academy and welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you easy cube animation like you saw on the beginning of this video. It's easy setup, beginner friendly and relatively short tutorial. So lean back, enjoy the video and I will see you at the end. So as you can see I'm using Blender 3.1 and here in this left corner you will be able to see all the shortcuts that I'm going to use. So I'm going to keep my default cube and let's bevel it here in edit mode. I'm going to press Ctrl and B and bevel it slightly to about here. Now I will go out of edit mode and here I will add subdivision surface modifier and I will press right click to change shading from flat to smooth and you can see that we are having this ugly shadowing effect. So I'm going to navigate here under object data properties and under normals I'm going to turn out the smoothing effect. So let's go and add more cubes to our scene with array modifier. So I'm going to navigate to modifier stack and apply array modifier. For count I will increase it to 3 and now with the shift and D I'm hovering here. I will go and duplicate the same array modifier and instead having arraying on the X axis I'm going to switch this time on the second array modifier to Y axis. So here I will press and write down 0 and here I'm going to replace with 1. Now with the shift and D I will duplicate it one more time and I'm going to do the same for the last one but this time I'm going to go and change array modifier to be applied on the Z axis. So as you can see we got this Rubik cube very simple and very easy. Next I'm going to go and create simple plain empty object so with the shift and A I'm going to apply empty plain axis. Right now we cannot see anything so I'm going to scale it up because we want to use this empty object to control array modifiers which will help us with creating the animation that you saw in the beginning of the video. So here if you press N and go here under transform you can see that scale is messed up so I'm going to press ctrl and A and apply scale so now we got visually the same object here but our scale is returned to 1. So now we can go and attach this empty object to array modifiers on our cube so I'm going to select cube and here under modifier stack on our first array modifier I'm going to turn this object offset and here for the object I'm going to attach this object the empty one. Now I'm going to skip the second array modifier and on our third array modifier I'm going to repeat the same so object offset and attach the same empty object that I created. So now if you move this object you can see that it's affecting array modifiers. So now I'm going to move this up and let's decrease number of frames for our animation to 70. So I'm going to write down here 70 and now we can start inserting our first keyframes to the scene. So first I will insert our first keyframe on our Z location here. I will press right click and insert single keyframe. And because we want to create looping animation I'm going to duplicate this by pressing shift and D and moving all the way here on the 71st frame. Now on the 50th frame I'm going to go and replace this with 0.8 and I will press right click and insert keyframe once again. So now if you play this animation you can see that our cubes are moving up and down. And now I'm going to repeat the process but this time it's going to be for rotation. So on our first frame I'm going to hover here and press I to insert keyframes on rotations. And also I will repeat the same here as well on our last frame. And here on the 50th frame I'm going to press RZ to rotate it along the Z axis to about here like so. And also I will press R and a little bit here I will just bend it like so. And I will press I once again to insert another keyframe here. And now if you play this animation you can see that we got the desired effect. So now I'm going to fix it a little bit. You can see it's a little bit slow it's a little bit the same pace is going up and down. So here I'm going to select those two keyframes so the 50th and the last keyframe and I'm going to change interpolation mode between those two. By default it's set to be Bezier so I'm going to press T and this time I'm going to use this dynamic effect which is going to be bounce and now if you play this animation you can see that we got the desired effect. So now we are done with animating our cube so now we can focus on rest of the scene. So first I'm going to stop my animation and let's add background which is going to be a simple plane object. So with the shift and A I'm going to create simple plane object and scale it all the way up like so. Now I will move in front orthographic cube and with G and Z I'm going to place it under cube like so. And next we can go and start with animating our camera. So here I'm going to press 0 to enter in camera mode and with shift and grave key which is key above tab right here you can see how it looks. You will be able to enter in fly camera mode so now you can use your keyboard to navigate around with your camera and also you can go and scroll your mouse up and down to increase the speed of your camera. 
So here on the 50th frame, I'm going to go and grab my camera and place it to about here, like so. Let's go and see and place our camera in the middle of our cube to about here on the first frame. And now on the 50th frame, I want to have zooming effect, so I'm going to go and actually just go and move our camera closer to the object to about here is going to be just fine and now I'm going to select my camera here in scene collection and I will insert keyframes on location and rotation by just pressing I while I'm hovering here on location and rotation as well so now here on our first frame I'm going to press shift and grave key to enter once again in our camera fly mode and I'm just going to press S to move it out here and now I will press I and I here as well to insert two keyframes on location and rotation. And because we need to looping animation, the first and last keyframes need to be the same. So with the shift and D, I'm going to drag it and duplicate it the first keyframes here on the 71st frame. So now if you play this animation, you can see that our camera is moving toward our object and it's also returning as well. But we are having issue because we cannot see behind here and the reason for that is because by default our camera clipping start and end is going to be like this. So I'm going just to increase the ending clipping like so and also we can go and increase our plane object as well. And now you can see that we got the desired effect. So right now I'm going to go and select my camera and here I'm going to select those two keyframes and by pressing T I'm going to also apply this interpolation which is going to be bouncing so now if you play this animation you can see that the camera is also following the movement of the cubes and also here on our first frame i'm going to adjust my camera a little bit so here i will just move my camera slightly closer down and here i'm going to insert another keyframe so i will press i once again now i will need to replace the last keyframe as well so i will duplicate the first one and place it here on 71st frame and now there is also one more thing that we need to apply on our cube and that one is wave modifier to get some life into our cubes. So here I'm going to go under modifier stack and apply wave modifier. So now if you play this animation you can see that our cubes are wiggling around and it's wiggling way too much so I'm going to decrease height here to 0 0.21. And now everything is going to be just fine so we have this subtle effect of movement of the cubes. And now we can go and switch to render at view and here we have this our default point light so I'm going to remove it from the scene. And also I will switch my render engine from being EV to cycle and also for device I will use this GPU compute. So right now we cannot see anything and the reason for that is because we don't have any lights to the scene. For our animation we are going to use HDRI so I'm going to switch to shading. And here currently by default is set to object shading so we will need to switch to wall shading. And here I will select this background node and by pressing ctrl and t I'm going to bring this group nodes which is going to be environment texture mapping and texture coordinate as well. And if you cannot do the same shortcut that I did here you can press shift and a and manually type down all those nodes or you can go under edit and enable node wrangler add-on which is right here so you will need to check this like so. And now I'm going to go and import our HDRI which you can get from hdriheaven.com. I'm going to post link in the description of this video. So I'm going to go and insert it. So for my scene I'm going to use this Photo Studio 0.1 HDRI that you can get from hdriheaven.com. And here you can see the look of it. And there is also one more thing that we need to animate on our scene and that one is actually this HDRI. So here I'm going to go and create a new window by dragging this up and here I will switch to timeline. So now on our first frame I want to go and insert first keyframe for our HDRI which is going to be rotation. And actually that is the only thing that we are going to animate with this HDRI. So here you can see if you go and play with this Z rotation you can see that our HDRI is rotating around and giving us different lightning to the scene. So here I'm going to go and insert first keyframe on the first frame. And I'm going to move on our last keyframe and here I will go and write down 360 and here I will insert another keyframe on that. And now if you play this animation you can see that our HDRI is rotating around cube and giving us different lighting and which is going to be a really nice effect later on in our animation. So now we can switch here to layout and now we can focus on applying materials to this plane and also to our cube. So for those I'm going to use this add-on called Blender Kit which you will be able to get from the link down below. And here I'm going to now use it. 
So here I have a search to materials and here I'm going to enable this searching option. And this time I'm going to search for basic metal shader, which I used for this plane here. So I'm going to select this plane and here you can see this basic metal shader. So now if you press left click, now you will be able to get it here on this plane. And for cube, I'm going to use filament procedural material. And now I'm going to select cube and by pressing left click we are going to apply this material to our cube. And now if you play this animation you can see everything should be just fine and we are done with this video. If you want to learn more about Blender, check out our online academy, blendercraft.com, with over 80 courses inside. You can get a monthly subscription plan or you can get them individually. With the price, same as Netflix, it's your choice. Should you watch a movie or create one? The link will be down below and I will see you in the next video. Bye!